Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Growing concerns over a planned trunk or treat at a Clinton Township cemetery. Some community members are not happy about plans to hold the event where their loved ones were laid to rest. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. The event is set to happen at the Cadillac Memorial Gardens East. That's off Garfield in Clinton Township. Victor Williams live for us there right now after talking to community members, the folks who run the cemetery. Victor, what have we learned? Well, this event is supposed to be taking place in just two days, Devin and Kimberly, and some people don't like the location at all because it just so happens to be the final resting place for so many. It's just not appropriate. It's 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 kind of morbid, actually. Sandra Hartunian is one of the people displeased with the fact that a trunk or treat event is happening at Cadillac Memorial Garden Cemetery. This is sacred ground. It's disrespectful say that you're going to go trick-or-treating on sacred ground when there was what 100 trunk or treaters all over the county where they can do this. Sandra's also not too happy with the flyer for the event also implying there will be classic cars as well. This kind of crosses the line especially with the idea of having a vintage car show. I mean that's just it's not the place to have a trick or treating when you can go anywhere to do that all over this county. Over the phone someone with the cemetery stated there will not be a car show despite the flyer. Their brochure is coming out saying a vintage car show unless they change that because they received a lot of flack. And how would you respond to those who are saying that all of this is being done for the children? There's so many places for kids to go and I think that parents would be wise to go and check those out. My hope is that nobody shows up and I'm hoping that this sends a message that maybe next year this will not repeat. Now, we were told to expect a statement from the cemetery, but at this point in time, we have yet to receive it. Victor Williams, Local 4. Okay, Devin. Victor. Uh, let's turn now to a developing story out of Lansing after a two-year-old boy was found shot outside a gas station today. Uh, the NBC affiliate in Lansing is reporting that the child's injuries are life-threatening. Police arrived at the gas station on the city's southeast side just after 3 o'clock this afternoon. We are still waiting for word on the current condition of the child. Uh, all we know is that they are currently uh, in the hospital and again, um, uh, life-threatening injuries. So we will have more updates just as soon as we learn more. Well, it is the longest running strike based in our state, but it hasn't gotten the headlines like the UAW strike and the Dr Detroit casino workers strike. About 1,100 Blue Cross Blue Shield workers have been fighting for more than 40 days for things such as better pay and benefits. Sean Lay is following this story for us tonight, and he joins us live with more. Sean. Kimberly, let's talk about this. We came right back here today to talk to folks on the picket line. Here you see everything set up. September 13th, it was a Wednesday, 40 days ago. That's when these workers here, a lot in the call center, mail room, administrative, things like that, engineering, they went on strike. Now, we asked Blue Cross Blue Shield today for an update. Didn't hear back. We asked the UAW for an update. Their response to us was no status update on what's happening with this situation. And people we talked to out here on the picket line said they feel that. They have heard nothing for 40 days. How long have you been out on strike? Uh, so we're right around, right around day 40. You were the first to go out? Yes. What's it been like? It's been taxing, to be honest with you. Um, we have a lot of our coworkers here. You know, everybody has different challenges, financially speaking, but emotionally. Um, you feel like you work really hard to do your job. And from my, my perspective, feeling like the company is not coming forth with a good faith offer. Blue Cross Blue Shield employees like Joseph McIntyre are the voice of the company talking to customers in the call center. He and others here are UAW members and the first to go on strike before the auto workers, before casino workers. But they feel rather abandoned, left out here for 40 days. They haven't heard much from the company or their union. But they're leaving you out here. Yeah day after day after day. So that's kind of hard to take. It is. Alicia Green has worked at Blue Cross Blue Shield for decades. And I haven't gotten a raise in over 13 years. We deserve to be able to feed our families. Times have gotten to the point to where everything has increased by two, three times the amount to go to get gas, to get food. So why shouldn't we get wages that are comparable to the times? Back here live, strikers have already been in some cold rain today, just a beautiful day, but you know, weather is gonna change, snow is gonna start flying, and they hope to have some answers to get back to work. 
And they're also asking for UAW president guy, Sean Fain, to come pay a visit here. They see him with the auto workers. They would like him to come here because they are UAW to get an update, uh, see what's happening with this and see if there's going to be some sort of resolution. We're live tonight downtown. Sean Lay, Local 4, back yeah, to you. Indeed, okay. Sean, thank you. As the UAW members at Blue Cross Blue Shield continue their fight, the union's contract with the big three automakers continues. Today, there was another expansion of the stand-up strike. 5,000 auto workers at the Arlington Assembly Plant in Texas walked off the job, shutting down production at General Motors' largest plant. We head to Rod Maloney, who is uh, breaking all this down for us. What this expansion of the strike means, uh, these workers, many of them, Rod, really starting to feel the financial pinch, too. Well, and that's the thing, Devin. You know, it's day one on the picket line down in Arlington, Texas, where it's nice and toasty warm. Here, yes, it was warm today, but it's been pretty rough the past couple of weeks. And it's also day 40, right? And 33 days up in Pontiac, where we work today, talking to people, getting just $500 a week. And this is the long-term bargain they make, right? They get a little short-term pain for some long-term gain, which it appears they're going to get eventually. But they've got to get there first. <laughs> Day one of a strike is always an emotional outpouring. In Arlington, Texas today, there was a spring in the step. And for all those that are around her, Lord. Conversely, 33 days in here in Pontiac, they're getting a little weary. UAW 653 receiving clerk Judith Rice did the math on her daily four-hour picket line duty shifts. Financially, just, it, it's, it's rough going from a regular paycheck to making $12.80 an hour. To her, a month of income cut by two-thirds feels much like her childhood. It's kind of like going back to all the things that my mother who raised me while she was um, growing during the Depression era, kind of that thing. It's like you don't throw away leftovers, you turn it into soup. She's 10 years on the job here at the Pontiac Parts Distribution Center, as is UAW 653 truck driver Anthony Swafford. They both stood out here in the 2019 GM UAW strike and both knew to make an emergency fund. How much did you set aside? Uh, roughly about five grand. So he's going to be okay with a longer strike. If we had to stay out here longer, I mean, you just make provisions. <laughs> Still, Judith's creditors started out okay with delayed payments. But we've already been out over 30 days. They, they don't want to hear it anymore. They want that car note paid. And now she's forced to do the unthinkable. I've already taken an, an application to go work at some of the Dollar Trees and stuff like that just to start supplementing some of the income. And to that point, late this afternoon, Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce CEO Sandy Baru weighed in on the strike, slamming UAW President Sean Fain in the same vein, uh, saying, quote, beyond damaging the very companies their membership relies upon for jobs today and tomorrow, the strike is damaging Michigan's economy from dealers, auto repair shops, restaurants, and a slew of other businesses. When Fain says, I want to be crystal clear, the days of the UAW and Ford being a team to fight other foreign companies are over, believe him. This is about fighting, not finances. So this is, in some, some circles, not going over particularly well. Reporting live downtown, Rod Maloney. On we go. All right, Rod. Well, we are also tracking a labor dispute at Detroit's casinos. Today, union members packed Detroit's city council chambers. Casino workers asked the city council for its support and expressed their concerns about replacement workers. City council passed a resolution supporting the employees, telling them to keep fighting. Well, here's a 180. Just yesterday, <laughs> uh, some folks had frost on their cars when they woke up, and today we're uh, up in the 70s. Plenty of sunshine also yeah. helping the temperatures just soar. Unbelievable, Kim. Uh, we're going to have another 180, though, the rest of the week, probably. <laughs> I mean, it keeps me employed. It keeps me busy. <laughs> 77 degrees downtown. It's mid-70s at the airport. 68 in Mount Clemens, 74 in Pontiac. Monroe, last hour, you were close to 80 degrees, now down to 76. Right now, it is 23 degrees warmer than it was just 24 hours ago at the airport and also in Monroe, 21 degrees warmer in Pontiac. Now, tomorrow we go the opposite direction. We do cool down, but we're still technically above normal for this time of year. We do bring in the clouds and some rain throughout the day tomorrow with a high up to 66. I'll have a preview of your Halloween forecast, which is one week from tonight coming up. New at 6. 
We are hearing from Paul Whelan, uh, the Novi native, been detained so long now in Russia as he nears five years, in fact, in captivity. The former Marine has been left out of two prisoner swaps in which other Americans were released. U.S. officials have said the Russians refused to include Whelan in those deals. Whelan recently spoke to CNN about his call with Secretary of State Antony Blinken back in August. I told him point blank that um, leaving me here um, the first time um, painted a target on my back and leaving me here the second time um, basically signed a death warrant. They think I'm high value, so they want something high value in return. He did tell me that he's working uh, quite diligently and his team is working quite diligently to find a resolution to this situation. Well, despite his strong words to Blinken, Whelan expressed confidence that work is indeed being done to secure his release. Two people have now been charged in connection with that fatal shooting at a baby shower. Shawanda Woods and Leandre Love, both charged in the October 15th incident. Police say a fight at the baby shower ended with 53-year-old Phoebe Ann Williams of Detroit being shot to death. Prosecutors say Woods fired the gun. She faces charges including second-degree murder. The victim's family says Leandre Love is the victim's son. He faces assault charges for following Woods to the Detroit Police 9th Precinct after the shooting and hitting her with his car. We'll keep you updated as the case progresses. Police in Monroe County are looking for a man who they say posed as law enforcement and took thousands of dollars from an elderly woman. Investigators are looking for this man. Take a look here. He's Juan Romero. Police say it all started when the woman was contacted by a man who identified himself as a member of the Dundee Police Department. He told the victim her grandson was involved in a fatal traffic crash, had been arrested, and needed bail money. After the call, Romero showed up at the victim's home and collected that money. A warrant is now out for his arrest. Take a good look there. Anybody with information on his whereabouts is asked to call the Monroe County Sheriff's Office.